All right, welcome to week three of the Cavalier Insider pregame show. Andrew Ramspacker and Jerry who you at Cliff as Virginia will take on the 21st ranked Louisville Cardinals 1230 on Saturday at Scott Stadium. The Who's come in at one and one after beating Richmond 45-13. Defense creates seven takeaways, the most uh, by a Virginia team since I believe 2002 against South Carolina. And that really was a story. Uh, the, a lot of talk going into that one uh, was about the quarterbacks on both sides of things, Hootie. But uh, at the end of the day, everybody wanted, really wanted to talk about uh, was that defense and creating seven ter- takeaways. Yeah, I mean, that was about as impressive an effort by a defensive squad as you're going to see. Uh, I think the last week we talked about how this defense reminded you of some of Rick Lance's defenses back in the, in the 90s. And uh, they just – Seem to get better every week. More guys making big plays. Henry Coley, Romero, Eli Harold, Vallis, those guys. I mean, they're just they're just uh, doing a fantastic job. I, better than I knew they were going to be good, but I think they're even better than I anticipated. Yeah, I think uh, you look back to week one, and they really surprised a lot of people with what they did to UCLA. UCLA, although they struggled against Memphis last week, it was the UCLA defense that struggled. The UCLA offense – showed what it was supposed to be beginning of the year. A lot of people have them as a trendy uh, playoff contender. They rolled up 42 points. I think Hunley went for well over 300 yards and things like that. Let's not forget that they scored all of one touchdown <laughs> offensive against Virginia's defense in week one. So UVA now puts together back-to-back solid performances, which last year was a big question mark. They couldn't really find that consistency. Um, you know, and granted, it was against a, an FCS team, but an FCS team in Richmond that had – gone for over 600 yards uh, the week before against Moorhead State that had a quarterback in Michael Strauss, who's a Walter uh, Payton Award candidate, who was the best you know, candidate for the best player at that level. And really after that first series, I felt like Virginia's defense really settled down and really just kind of got after it. I think they had four sacks. They have nine sacks already this season. Uh, you know, already, I believe, what, nine turnovers as well. So mm-hmm. really just a mix. You think back to 2012 – uh, it was Jim Reed's last year, that kind of that read and react defense. And they only produced, uh, I believe, 12 takeaways, 17 sacks. Two years later, with John Tenuta, you, he's known for that aggressive schemes and things like that. He's going to get after it. And I think you've really seen the benefits of that through two games this season. Yeah, and I, and I think that's something that Virginia fans have been clamoring for for years. They've always wanted more blitzing, more aggressiveness, uh, more turnovers. And now they're getting it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tanuta obviously has that reputation. Archer, uh, I think he likes to play aggressive football as well. And, uh, I mean, these guys are, are going to be one of the best defensive units in the ACC. Mm-hmm. There's no question about it. And uh, it's going to be interesting this weekend because uh, Virginia's number three in the conference against the Rush. Louisville was number sure. one in the conference against the Rush. So uh, it could be a, a bit of a defensive battle. It just depends on – what Virginia's offense can can possibly do. Which leads us, obviously, to our next point. The seven takeaways uh, against Richmond, one of them resulted in a score, which really obviously uh, helped in the total. Eli Harrell picking up a uh, a Max Vallis um, sack that led to a fumble. Eli Harrell picks it up, rumbles in, I think, from 22 yards for the first defensive score in two years for Virginia. But uh, on the flip side, you know, Richmond outgained Virginia, actually. Now, a lot of that had to do with UVA, had a lot of uh, – had a lot of short fields to deal with because of the takeaways. But, again, it always goes back to the quarterbacks. Uh, Grayson Lambert did get the start after kind of a week of mystery. He would get that. Uh, he goes the first three series. Matt Johns comes in for the next five series. Grayson Lambert comes back for an early fourth quarter series, throws a touchdown pass, and after that they kind of handed the reins to David Watford. Uh, and the, the day was done for the two main Virginia quarterbacks. And, we sat here last week and we said, we know what would happen, right? These guys would kind of play evenly. Nobody would emerge as a number one. <laughs> That's basically what happened. Uh, I believe Matt Johns, on his drives, they led to 17 points. Grayson Lambert, they led to 14 points. Uh, Grayson Lambert, a little more accurate. I think he was 13 of 15. Uh, Matt Johns, four of seven with an interception, which maybe wasn't his fault. Uh, both of them had touchdown passes to Cannon Severin. So pretty similar on both sides. Mike Lennon will, again, go with this two-quarterback system. Uh, on Saturday against Louisville. Is this any different 
than what we've seen with Rocco and Sims, Rocco and Watford. I know every fan, when they see this quarterback system, they, they cringe because they think about kind of how those scenarios unfolded and they weren't that great. Yeah, I mean, uh, you hear the old adage, if you have two quarterbacks, you don't have one. So uh, it is it, it is very similar in, in past circumstances mm-hmm. with Rocco and Watford and Rocco and Sims and uh, – uh, it, it's it's really going to be interesting to see how this plays out. I asked Mike London after the press conference. I was just curious can can you <laughs> can you keep doing this? I mean, some people have played two quarterbacks in one, but most people like Saban at Alabama played two last week and wanted to settle on one, which apparently he has. I don't know if London's going to do that or not. Okay. I don't know if he's going to just keep playing these guys until one of them eliminates himself by errors. Right. Uh, I don't know otherwise how they're going to separate it and and whether or not they're going to play two guys for the rest of the season. I I got to feel at some point somebody's got to break through and take command of the job. And I think the sooner that happens, the better it is for Virginia's offense because I just think it's better when you have one guy that you can depend on all the time. Well, maybe they'll figure that out uh, on Saturday against the Louisville defense, as we've kind of teased a little bit, is one of the best – in the ACC, if not one of the best in the country, certainly be a test for Matt Johns and Grayson Lambert uh, against that side of the ball for the Cardinals. So we'll look ahead to UVA and Louisville, that matchup after this. Hey, welcome back to the Cavalier Insider pregame show. Time to break down Saturday's matchup uh, between Virginia and the 21st ranked and undefeated Louisville Cardinals. It will be the first road ACC game uh, for Louisville, who has spent – Parts of the last decade in Conference USA, in the Big East, last year there in the AAC, uh, now finally has a home. uh, For the time being, it seems to be a permanent home in the ACC. Louisville takes Maryland's spot on the schedule in the Atlantic, so Virginia and Louisville will play each other in that cross-divisional game uh, from here on out. So this is kind of be maybe the birth of a rivalry. I don't know. Um, Obviously not geographically, not the same as taking on Maryland and Recruiting wise, not the same as taking on Maryland, but hey, in this stage, this day and age of college football, this is kind of how it how it goes. So here we go. Uh, kickoff is, is twelve thirty, and uh, we talked about it in the in the first segment about Virginia's offense. And um, you know, yes, the defense is is carrying them to this point. The offense still trying to find certainly a quarterback number one, but still trying to find somewhat of an identity. Obviously, since Steve Fairchild has come here, he's wanted to be a running football team. Um, last year, he got a thousand yard back in Kevin Parks. But last year they also had two NFL linemen, uh, Morgan Moses and Luke Boanko. The offensive line this year, uh, it took up all the headlines in the preseason. Who would it be? Those five guys did okay against UCLA in week one, didn't get up a sack. Uh, but running game was, was tough to, to find some holes there. And then last week, uh, again, the rushing game was, was struggled. Uh, I think the longest runs came from the quarterbacks on scrambles from Matt Johns and Grayson Lambert. Nothing over 10 yards from Kevin Parks. Nothing over 10 yards from Smoke Mizell. How key is this for that running game to get started, especially on Saturday against the Louisville defense, as you said, is one of the best in the country at stopping that? I think, I think it's huge, uh, particularly this, this weekend against Louisville because uh, I didn't see their highlights against Murray State or whoever it was they mm-hmm. beat last week, but uh, which apparently <laughs> was a lot of lopsided highlights. Right. But I did watch the Miami game, and they Louisville's defense dictated the entire game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Miami couldn't do much of anything, and Miami's got some pretty dynamic mm-hmm. guys. Duke Johnson, <laughs> Duke Johnson, uh, Dorset kid, a wide receiver mm-hmm. who runs a four-two forty, uh, and a you know not a great offensive line, but a decent offensive line, and they they couldn't do much of anything against mm-hmm. Louisville. Uh, I was really impressed with the way Louisville stopped the run, stuffed the run, made him throw it, made that young quarterback, forced him into a lot of mistakes. Virginia's got young quarterbacks who uh, have a tendency of yep. possibly making some mistakes as well. So I think it's huge. They're somehow they're, they're not going to win any big games, I don't think, until they can learn how or master a way to put up some offensive yardage on the ground. But, uh, if you can control the line of scrimmage, you can do anything. Right. Louisville does that. I don't know if Virginia can. They can on the defensive side of the ball. I just don't know if this offensive line is ready to be able to take on a challenge like this. Yeah, we've seen the conservative approach, there's no doubt, from offensive coordinator Steve Fairchild in weeks 
Definitely in week one, um, I thought against Richmond there was more shots down the field a little bit. And the thing is about Lambert and Johns, more Johns, it seems like when he does go downfield, they have success. They have these big receivers now that are able to go up and get it. Um, and, and, you know, Lambert has been a little more tentative about it, but, you know, his last throw of the last game was a nice 29-yard yeah. strike to Severin uh, for a touchdown in the end zone. So, you know, I think they have certainly have the ability to do it. It's a matter of will Steve Fairchild open it up a little bit. You know, I think Louisville is somewhat comparable to UCLA in terms of, um, you know, a really stout defense, thing like that. Maybe you don't want to try too much to, to get too cute, and, you know, you'll run into some situations. What do you think that the game plan is here? I mean, you know, they seem predictable. I think against UCLA they're in 23 of 27 first down plays for runs against uh, – or excuse me, 22 of 29 against UCLA, 23 of 27 uh, against Richmond. On first down, they were running plays. So teams kind of load up there. Play action. I mean, what, what can you do to, to to mix this up to maybe you know give this this offense more creativity? <laughs> well, you can do uh, more play action. You can yeah. do uh, some motions and things and try to get mismatches. Although Louisville, it's hard to get a good sure. mismatch against that front seven. They're so good, but um, it's going to be interesting to see if they stick with that conservative approach or not. I know it worked for Tom O'Brien at Boston College and. I don't know if that's something that uh, he he and uh, London and Fairchild are all on the same wavelength or not in just trying to play close to the vest, depend on your defense to mm-hmm. create some havoc and, and turnovers. Um, I, I kind of feel like that they're going to stay conservative. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's my feeling. I kind of wish they would open it up. I think it would be – more to their advantage, but uh, then again, you know, they get paid the big bucks to make those decisions, yeah. but I have a feeling they're going to stay conservative against Louisville. Yeah, so do I. I mean, we basically saw that this conservative approach basically all of Steve Fairchild's debut season uh, last year, you know, and again, maybe that's something to do with David Watford learning as a quarterback. Same situation here. He's got two guys uh, in their first year as starters, Matt Johns and, and Grayson Lambert. Real quickly, uh, on the flip side, Let's talk briefly about Louisville, Louisville's offense. You know, I think this was a, this was a team in the spring game. Uh, Will Gardner, starting quarterback, threw the ball 37 times for like 540 yards. I think people thought that, okay, you know, Bobby Petrino's back. They're going to air it out like they used to. This is a running team. Uh, Dominic Brown is one of the top in the ACC right now. He's 241 pounds. This will be the most physical team to play Virginia's defense. There's no doubt to this point this year. How do you think they, they hold up against that? Well, I think Virginia's defense is going to do well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that you're right, though. I think Louisville is some, one of the more physical teams in the league and uh, with a punishing running game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Miami struggled to stop it. And uh, granted, Miami's defense is not nearly as good as Virginia's, but uh, I, I think Virginia will do a good job against it. It's a matter, I think, of whether Gardner can hit open receivers when he when he uh, has them, because uh, I I just don't see them having a lot of running success against this right. defense. It's just a gritty, tough defense. So I, Gardner, a lot of people thought you know he was going to be the key to their season, whether he was the real deal, and, and apparently he is. He looks really good. Uh, I think he's going to try to test Virginia's secondary and. See what he can do. Yeah, he hasn't thrown interception through two games this season. Um, has been certainly pretty, pretty solid on that end. And of course, the running game has led it uh, the other part of that offense to their success. So they're two and zero. They really haven't had a test yet. Will Virginia provide it? We'll see on Saturday. We'll come back in our next segment. Give our predictions for Saturday's game between UVA and. Okay, prediction time here. Segment number three of the Cavalier Insider pregame show again. Andrew Ansbacker. And Jerry Ratcliffe, as UVA takes on Louisville on Saturday, 12:30, Scott Stadium. And uh, again, last this point of last week, we said uh, kind of predict two things. Number one, um, who would win the game. Number two, who emerges as quarterback. I think we're both in agreement that, at least I am, or at least I think that these two are. It's going to stay status quo moving forward at BYU between uh, between Matt Johns and Grayson Lambert. I will say, just evaluating the two of them, there's something about Matt Johns that I, I seem to favor a little more. It seems like the offense, I don't know, they adapt to him more. He just has that ad-lib nature um, that 
I don't know. They give us kind of a spark to the offense. I mean, do you do you agree with that? I do. I I, I think there's it's an intangible that a lot of the quarterbacks yeah. have, and he, he seems to have it. He's just one of these get in there and play guys, right. and and I like the way he extends plays by being able to move, and that's something I don't think Lambert can do, and 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 I think that might be to his benefit right. against Louisville because they're going to be coming hard sure. after both of those guys. Sure, sure. Yeah, I think I just think that, like you said, the intangibles that Matt Johnson he's not he doesn't have a bigger arm than Grayson Lambert. No. He's skinnier than Grayson Lambert. Things like that. But I, I don't know. He um, can play. He can play. He's he's a gamer. <laughs> he is a gamer. I know it's kind of a cliche term, but certainly he's proven that. But uh, we'll equate to a victor on Saturday. I think that Virginia certainly puts up a test. I think they like they did against UCLA. It'll be the effort will be there. Things like that. I think in the end, Louisville just has a little bit more. I want to pick a UVA upset. I really do. Um, I feel like there's 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 certainly possibilities for it. Um, but I think until Virginia wins one of these big games, you got to trust it that Louisville will come in here. It's first ACC road game uh, and win. I'm going to say 24-17. You know, I had a gut feeling the other day that Virginia Tech was going to go into Columbus and win that game, mm-hmm. and I didn't have the guts to pick it in my yeah. picks, and I really felt like they were going to win. I had that same feeling about Virginia beating Louisville uh, – all day yesterday, but the more I've thought about it, I'm just – I think if it was just the defense, I think yeah. Virginia would win it, and yeah. special teams are just playing better too. I just – this offense has to prove sure. that it can move the ball against a really good defense when it matters. Yeah. And to be able to control things with the running game. And I just don't think they're ready for that right now with quarterback up in the area, offensive line, still not where he wants it to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just can't pick Virginia to win. I would not be shocked if they upset yeah, Louisville I here. I, I really agree. wouldn't. But I just can't pick them, and I agree with you. I think it's going to be a close game. I'm going to go Louisville by a touchdown. So there you have it. I think both of us got uh, Louisville win this thing by, by seven points. But, again, I th- another key, though, if Virginia can create takeaways like it did last week, that, that's, that's every- if they score on defense, I think they win. And, yeah. and that could be a difference. I agree. Or um, if they maybe run back at one of those kickoffs instead of get, getting stopped at the 10. Or so there, there are other, despite the struggling offense, the, the question marks in offense, there are other, other ways to score. Virginia found that out last Saturday with good special teams and good defense. If they're able to do those things, maybe they do, do pull off that upset. If they win Saturday, I think this, this whole season changes. Oh, absolutely. Uh, because you're looking at at least three wins in September because I think you've got to give them a win against Kent State at the end of the month. Who knows what happens in Provo next week against against BYU. And but three wins after the first month, well, then they got a shot to get to that bowl game. Mike London, obviously, uh, that would affect uh, his status going forward as Virginia's coach. They beat Louisville. They can have, they have a chance to just more than go to a bowl game. Yeah. They could go yeah. to a, a decent yeah. bowl game. It's a wide open yeah. it's a wide open league. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. So that does it for uh, week three of our, our pregame show. Uh, for Jerry Ratcliffe, I'm Andrew Ansbacker. Thanks for watching. <laughs>